Welcome back to Mrs. O'Gram's Maths while we work through a bivariate data project um, for level three statistics. So we've um, got our two models for this diamond set of data, and now we're going to use them to make a prediction. Now you need to make at least one prediction. I would suggest that you make um, a couple of them just in case you do something wrong. Now with our particular one that suits us really well because we've got these two different models, we should probably predict one for each one. So on model one, we've got the range of um, the carrots that could be applied to model one is from just below 0.2 up to about 0.45. So we pick something in between there. So for model one, I'm going to pick 0.3 carrots. And so then I would know that we're in the um, model one category and I can use that to predict the value to be approximately. And then we go over to our graph and first off, just do a visual um, line on here. So you can actually draw this onto your graph and show what it is that you've been doing. So we should come out to a number just below $1,000 and we use the equation to get that just exactly right. So if we put the equation in now, we will get that the price will be equal to that equation where we're putting 0.3 in for the carrot. So now pop that into the calculator and work it out. Now this is our working out. I've left a little room to put the answer at the end of my sentence above. So on the working out, give the full answer to that equation. But when you're giving your prediction, you should round that appropriately. So finishing off that sentence, I can use model one to predict its value to be approximately $940. So it needs to be rounded appropriately and put into um, the correct context and units. And this bit at the bottom just shows my working. Now we'll go do the same for model two. Now for this one, we need to pick a diamond size that will fit this range. So somewhere between 0.45 up to 1.1, I'll pick somewhere approximately in the middle of that. Um, so we'll go for, let's say um, 0.7. So there's my sentence saying what we're um, about to predict. We'll go over to the graph again to make sure that we get things in the right sort of range. So 0.7, if we read up to our line, that'll take us to just under $4,000. So now we can put the working out in. So the price is 9045.7 times 0.7 and then take away 2453.4, popping that into the, and we get 3878.59. So to finish off that sentence, we're gonna round this appropriately. So if I have a diamond of 0.27 carats, and I then I can use model two to predict its value to be approximately, it's gonna be in dollars, and let's make that 3880. You wouldn't go to any more accuracy than you've been given um, in the data set and you'd probably go like one significant figure less than the original data set that you've got, if not maybe a little bit less than that. Um, your predictions are an estimate, so you shouldn't be too um, specific on your uh, values that you give there. It wouldn't be sensible to predict 3878.59, for example. Uh, that's being too specific on a prediction that's not going to be absolutely 100% spot on anyway. There are a few things that you can move these do to move these answers into um, higher level than just um, a passing achieved grade. So we can talk about the confidence that we have in our predictions. So for example, on model one, where we're predicting for that 0.3, there's not a huge amount of variation in the scatter at that particular point. So you can talk about the interval that you might expect it to lie within. And the same if we look at model two, when we're going to 0.7, we've got the lowest point of the scatter up to the highest point at 0.7 gives you an interval that you would be more confident predicting within that interval rather than just giving that spot um, on the line. And then um, that one has more variation in it. So you might be a little less confident in the prediction there and it might range between those values at the top and the bottom. Along with doing that visual inspection of the range of the scatter, you can also check out the residuals plot and see what's happening there um, and seeing if there's anything that might affect your predictions and support the arguments that you're talking about with the spread of the scatter at that particular point. Um, there's a separate video on doing the residuals graphs. So you can go have a look at that afterwards. 
At this point, you could also consider whether causation is um, something that you think is going on. So when trying to predict the price of that diamond, is it the carat size that is causing the price to um, come out as it is? Or do you think that there are other factors involved and it's just a correlation rather than a causality relationship? And then finally, um, what effect did the different models have on our predictions? So we've chosen to use a different model than just one linear um, uh, model to fit to that. What you could do is go back to the full data set, put the, um, the one linear model on it and make those predictions and compare what it does to the predictions to have these two different models and whether we think that the two different models gave a better indicator and a better prediction level um, than we would have got from the original one line model if we hadn't separated these. So those are a few ideas of how to build up your um, project into showing that higher level of understanding. Um, and again, you should look into research and trying to link that into your project throughout if you're going for an excellence um, level project. All right, the next video is going to wrap up the, um, the whole project and doing a conclusion.